Or because of the sound. Because of the sound, yeah. Um, right, let's check if we're live. Hopefully we're <clears throat> hopefully we're coming through. Yep. Any um uh, let's have a look at uh, go to the old Facebook. Although usually Evertrackers we're you know, we live. do beat us to it. Um yeah, whilst we're waiting, how are you doing today, Dave? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. <clears throat> it's, um bit of a miserable day, isn't it, really? You know, no, it's not. Yeah, no, I, yeah. To be honest, I was going to go out for a ride tonight, but I'm just mm. afraid of doing it in the bad weather. You know, I just ah, um, see where you going now. It, see, yeah, yeah, see so, going. so yeah, and um, <clears throat> I was just wondering if there's anything I can do to kind of get over that, <laughs> so I can actually extract the enjoyment out of the experience and not focus <laughs> too much on the bits that are putting me off. Brilliant. You Brilliant. know, like slippery ground. You know, um, falling over, injuries. You know, that's it. Anything. Maybe we should talk about that today. You know what, Dave? I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everyone. How you doing? Um, right, who's on the live then? So we got Angus, Stuart. How you doing? Bry, Richard, great stuff. we got Jim Blues. Great to have you on, guys. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us um, on this very happy Tuesday. Mm. Uh, yeah, and, and today we wanted to... We, and we have talked about this before, and I think, you know, we're... We're obviously cognizant that different people are joining the lives all the time. Obviously, we've got some familiar faces on the live, which is always good. Angus is pretty prompt these days. Angus is pretty prompt. Yeah, Angus, yeah. I know you, you, you've been um, uh, obviously part of the uh, Evertracker community for, for a little, um, sh well, for a shorter time than most. Um, but we've got Sophie, we've got Thomas. How are you doing, everyone? Great to see you all on. I'm sure we'll have some more Evertrackers join. Mm -hmm. And yeah, today, we've, we always like to pick a subject. And as you, as you all know, anything goes. Um, on the Tuesday tune in. But today we did want to talk about those things. And, and, and in particular, there's kind of several things. So there's the seven things that um, kind of fears or kind of obstacles that can get in the way of adventure. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to talk about those today, um, as well as obviously all the usual questions that come on the, the Tuesday tune in. So yep. as always, any questions about anything to do with the trips, um, drop them in the comments and, and myself and Dave can, can go through it. And it certainly will. We've got um, little, obviously a little announcement today as well. Um, um, it's always, we're always announcing something, right? It's always, it's always <clears throat> something going on. Um, so we'll do that um, sort of about halfway through. But right, Dave, um, yeah, it's, it's weird that we talk about fears, but mm. really it's I'm quite, very it's, fearsome. Fearsome? I haven't heard that word for a while. Yeah, we need to change from being fearful to fearsome. Fearsome, I like that. I'm going to write that on Yeah. There. Um, that's on a t-shirt. That's on a t-shirt, Just yeah. like the Nepalese flag. Just like the Nepalese flag, yeah. <laughs> and we, we decided to be the right way around today. We, we had um, um, <laughs> James, who we uh, we, trekked, uh, we trekked with to Killy um, numerous years ago now. Um, well, it was about three years ago. Um, he said, why don't you get some t-shirts and mugs and hats that are actually printed backwards so that when we go on the live, because of the way it is, yeah, it it's actually say, the right way around. Say, like, Katrieve. It's actually the white way around today. Yeah, yeah, wow, no, it's great, good. Isn't it? we sw so that means we're on slightly different angles, and it? yeah, it's weird to look no, it's at. It's all good, but yeah, fears. It's a, fears. it's an interesting topic, yeah. and it's one that I think when we speak to customers and people yeah. make that first call, mm. it's I would say almost the majority of people when they call, make that first call, that first email, and they want to book on and they want yeah. to start an adventure really do they are they like yeah yeah book me on let's go let's go let's go <laughs> quite often they always say oh i really want to book on however yeah. i'm concerned about this you know i've lost count of the amount of times yeah, yeah, that i yeah. had to talk people through i really want to do base camp but i'm i'm terrified of heights okay you know so will i be able to do it crossing the bridges and things like that i don't, don't want to go too deep with this one we were too too soon what would be the first one the biggest fear that you think people are worried about before they go on a trek the biggest uh what'll be the biggest one it's as if we got notes dave yeah what would be the biggest one on? <laughs> but they're, they're, they're not in order they're not in order yeah. i know so this is the challenge now i don't really know really i mean i would say altitude yeah would that be number one i'd say uh, are, you, are you telling me it's altitude <laughs> like, like, I, I would have said altitude or fitness are probably the two biggest things that people are concerned about before they do the trip yeah um because really they're the two they're like physical limitations that people yeah. feel that if they come up against, they're not going to be able to overcome, you know? Exactly. So if you get severe altitude sickness, the decisions out of your hands, you have to go back. Yes. And if you reach a point where you are completely exhausted and unable to do any more physical exercise, yeah. again, the decision is made on your behalf by that problem and you have yeah, to go yeah. back. Bang so on. yeah, I would say fitness, altitude. Yeah. Well, I think let's start with altitude. I think 
uh, uh, just some comments there. I think it was Sophie, fear of altitude, but it's your first time. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I think for especially for people at the, the start of the journey, um, and I know a lot of people on the on the on the Tuesday tune in today are varying levels of that journey, whether it's your first time on one of our trips or our altitude, yeah, um, or any any adventure travel trip. Um, it can be quite a big thing. You, I, I think as human beings, we, we do tend to stick things on that kind of proverbial pedestal. Yeah. And, and naturally, we'll, I think we're also the best excuse makers in the world. Yeah. Um, we'll always come up with some reason why not to do anything. Unless, you, of course, you're, you're used to kind of go, no, no, shut up, we're going to do this. You know, to, to, to yourself almost, um, which, which can be a bit. Uh, if someone sees you making that decision and talking to yourself, they're like, is this person okay? Yeah, <laughs> but actually, it's just processing it in your mind. Um, but Sophie is, you know, hit the nail on the head there. For first timers, um, altitude can be a, a big, big worry and a fear. And yeah, I suppose from from our, I mean, let, let's go back to the beginning. Let's talk about some of our maybe experiences and stories. Um, and Dave, your first time at altitude, which um, obviously I wasn't with you, but I was on one of our first ever Everest trips, base camp. Yeah. Everest base camp. How, how did you feel before it? Were you? Were you um, was there anything on your mind? Were you feeling anxious about anything? I'll be honest, I was definitely apprehensive about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a couple of things that kind of do um, yeah, link together. So fitness and altitude are kind of like connected in a way. Yeah. You know, you if you if you build your fitness, you can certainly improve your performance at altitude and, and you're less likely to get altitude sickness. Yeah. I think my biggest thing was it was the unknown. Okay. So, and I've said this a few times on the on the live that I, I do believe that like knowledge dispels fear. Yeah. The more you know about something, the less afraid of it you are, and you're able to make informed decisions. One of the things that I did before I ever went to Everest Base Camp was I knew it was high. That's the whole, you know. I, I and I knew that well, I would, yeah, just about. <laughs> yeah, and I knew, and I knew that obviously I was going to experience symptoms of high altitude, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, shortness of breath, headaches, and things like that. But for me, it was really. I delved into it a lot and I tried to learn as much as I could about yeah. it. Um, it was actually, nowadays, it's so easy to do. We did a, um, on our Summit Zone platform, we did, uh, we had the guys from the Altitude Center in there. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, even though I hooked up with those guys after I'd already been to EBC and done Kilimanjaro, yeah. still learning from them helps me enormously. Um, just knowing how altitude affects the body, yeah. why it affects the body, what effects are taking place and also what the symptoms and progression of altitude sickness is yeah. means that when i went into it i was able to like know exactly what i was confronting and i knew that oh, i've yeah. got a headache that's normal i know why that's happening yeah. it's because i'm here it's not because anything's wrong and i honestly feel like that helps me if you know why something's happening you know whether or not it's something wrong or ex extraordinary that you know and yeah, for it, me that helped yeah and, and it's great because you know, we've all been there. Um, <clears throat> you know, we've all been at that start of the journey. Even if you've done it before, it can still, it still, you know, plays on your mind sometimes. Certainly, um, you know, because you're like, oh, where's my body up now? You know, am I am I going to be okay? Um, and I think, like you said about the the knowledge side of things, if you can kind of bring it to yourself that okay, altitude is, and, and you acclimatize the same. Uh, sorry, the first time every time. Um, you know, like yesterday. And we had a really good um, kind of workshop on the summit zone um, with James from the Altitude Center. And that was discussing the science of altitude. Yeah. It was really fascinating. Um, and, you know, it was something that, you know, it's always great to learn. Um, and there's different ways you kind of climatize. Obviously, you can do the, the altitude tents around, um, you know, building up a certain amount of red blood cells in your body. But, you know, 80 percent, 90 percent of the time, um, you know, you can acclimatize on the trip yeah. and it's the same process each time. And sometimes your body is not the same every time in terms of your hydration levels. Maybe you've got an underlying illness. You know, there's, there's always that kind of unknown as such, um, yeah. which can play on mine. I mean, it's played on mine and it's played on yours. But certainly when it comes to these trips, don't don't think that those things can stop that from stop you from going on that trip or enjoying it. Yeah. I think there's there's certainly things you can do to try and calm the lizard. <laughs> you know, you got you got that 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 bit of your brain that's trying to protect you, which is going, you know, don't you know you struggled last time or uh, maybe you're not fit enough. You know, you're always going to have those doubts. And I think it's um it's almost like you want to build up that positive side of your brain to kind of go, I can do it. Yes, I can. I, I look at what I've already achieved. Uh, maybe there's reasons why you're going on this trip that you can use as fuel 
to actually get you going yeah. and get you up in the morning and get you out there training and, and, and motivating you to, to, to push yourself. There's lots, there's lots of, of the, that kind of stuff that you can do. Um, certainly when it comes to altitude and first time. Yeah. And I think knowing how, you know, literally thousands of our ever trekkers now who have been to places like Everest Base Camp, Kilimanjaro, who have, who have, you know, and clearly just going through some of the comments there, which, um, which, you know, it, it's interesting to see that actually, I think all of us feel similar way. Yeah. Um, and, and seeing some of the comments, you know, when you're on a big trek and I think Bryce there, EBC or Killy, um, you know, it can be a big thing, but everyone else is going through the same sort of process and you're acclimatizing the same. Okay. Some of you might feel better than others, but you are going on that same journey together. Yeah. Um, and as Bry says there, it's like a, like a family for a couple of weeks, which is a great way of putting it. Yeah. I, um, yeah. Sorry, Dave. I, I, I was jabbering on there. No, it's good. <laughs> I, um, and yeah, I think with, with altitude as well, when it comes to adjusting from it, I think there is, there's, it's difficult one to kind of pin down because mm. how people adjust to it and how people sort of, you know, go forward and, you know, attempt a high altitude trek depends yeah. a lot on the person as well. Yeah. Sometimes you might have people who are that were concerned about their fitness, Yeah. you know, so go into there with those <clears throat> worries. And I think that can be rectified by some very easy training yeah. that you can do that, you know, shouldn't be scary and shouldn't put you off. And then there's the other side of the coin, which we've seen quite a lot of, which is people that are already really fit, yeah. take on a lot of challenges back home, um and then they go to altitude and and they have it in their mind that this is a challenge that needs to be sort of confronted yeah. like a bulldozer and i'm just gonna go as hard <laughs> and as fast like. as i can and i'm gonna pitch myself against the challenge yeah now there's not much you can do to hold those people back other than try and educate them and say well you know if this is your first time in altitude and you go in with that mindset there's a very real chance that you're going to end up falling short of your goal mm. and having to turn back and yeah. you're going to experience unpleasant symptoms of altitude sickness because you haven't acclimatized properly. You've trekked too far, too fast. You yeah. haven't concentrated on nutrition and uh, hydration and you haven't, you know, heeded the warning signs. Now, those type of people, and it's really difficult to try and I think they're the hardest. Yeah. I would rather someone come to me and be, I'm really concerned about my fitness because that's a very real easy thing to fix. Mindset yeah. is difficult. Trying to slow a speedy Gonzalez down, you know, is difficult. Yeah. But I think that's part of the challenge for those people is retraining the mind to think instead of I want to be first across the line and fastest across the line, yeah. I'm going to go and be in the middle or the back of the pack and I'm going to help my fellow ever trackers and exactly, I'm going to help yeah. my, I'm going to help my family who are you know get across the line all healthy and happy. I think we talked about maybe six, seven weeks ago, we talked about the different kind of characters that you have on trips and, um, you know, whether you're someone that does kind of chill at the back or, you know, you're, you're, you're a bit of that maverick that wants to go for it. Um, yeah, we're all kind of individuals in that way. Um, but certainly um, when it comes to this, you know, this type of thing around, um, you know, the fear of, of almost sometimes it's, yeah, because it's the fear of the unknown. It can be, it can stop you from doing so much in life and, not just tracking now there's lots of stuff and not to go too deep <laughs> today um but i hope some of this helps and you know obviously we're just two guys who have <clears throat> you know we run a lot of trips you know literally hundreds of these trips each year um to challenging places and you know we kind of get a feel for um you know experiences some of our ever trackers have been through and yeah. the learns obviously our personal learns as well from um you know some of the things that we've been through and obviously we're in part in that kind of advice to, to you yeah um you know and, and reading some of the comments as well i think um where is it i'm just going to bring up i think it was adam actually adam edwards hey yeti he's just caught up altitude on ebc was awful worried about booking killy yeah it, exactly and you know th again this is because alt altitude every time you go to altitude is the first time essentially i think you said that one yeah um you know you're you, you could react positive one way and then not so positive another time um, I also know that there's people out there who found certainly in your position, Adam, like Killy easier than every space camp. Some people vice versa, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, you know, and, and, it, and it is always different. And I think certainly don't let it put you off, um, giving it a go, giving it a, a try and, and feed that on to, to what Lee said there. I think Lee, what about being scared of being disappointed? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and, uh, which, underwhelmed with the destination. Yeah. It's, which is a big thing. And that, that, that kind of fear of, almost failure of not achieving it. I mean, look, you know, this is life, you know, things don't always go right. Um, but remember what you're doing, you're going on an awesome adventure, whatever happens, 
You're going to see some uh, fantastic parts of the world. You're going to meet new cultures. You're going to meet new people. You're going to see like some epic views. Um, and I, I, I think as as human beings, we, we like to achieve things, don't we? Um, and I think especially if you're on this live, you're, you're the people who want to, um, you know, go and, and push yourself out there. But we don't always win. And what does it say? You, you win or you learn, right? Win or you learn, yeah. And the thing is, the destination, hmm. it's that it, it's yeah. the, these trips are, are really about the destination itself. Like the summit of Island Peak, Mera Peak, the summit of Everest is just a relatively unremarkable small patch of snow. Yeah. You know, the, <laughs> the destination would be underwhelming if you saw it in a car park. But yeah. it's about the journey that it took you to get there. Exactly. And I think that's a lot of what we book on when we go with these trips is, yes, we want to reach the yeah. summit of the mountain, but that's only part of it. Um, and, you know, the the other part of it, and in my mind, the bigger part of it is about the journey. Yeah. You know, when I think back, weirdly, when I think back to summit in Kilimanjaro. Yeah. I really think about the summit. We, I mean, I'm very proud of my achievement, and I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm so happy that I that I did reach the summit. But when I think back, like the memories that come into my mind often are in camp and having a good time and laughing and joking yeah. and all the banter that we had on the way up, <laughs> and just the whole experience. You know, if yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that fantastic. If you are concerned about being underwhelmed by that, I think these journeys are what you make of them you know so yeah exactly like going out yeah. there and doing that yeah i am um, brian makes a good point the only thing you should be afraid of on a trek is the fact that i might be on the same track because <laughs> apparently i'm a bloody nightmare <laughs> brilliant Brian. brilliant yeah so um if, if you are booked in just if you want to check brian's not on your trip just just email us we'll let you know <laughs> yeah. um you know we'll we'll put some warning tape around um if he's on the if he's in camp um just so there's a degree of separation um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> only getting right <laughs> um brilliant that's brilliant no it's some really nice comments as well sorry we, we've got so this is a relatively new setup now we, we've got our laptops with all of our comments and um uh, we've got a friendly little yeti here as well um we, which i haven't got a name yet it's not no got a name. i don't think it's been named at all we'll have to we'll have to do that about yeah. this name um does it, does it come with a name no it's, it's well I mean, we gotta even if it did yeah is we're gonna change gotta it rename it yeah um, any recommendations for what we're going to call our little Yeti here? Do let us know. That was a, a Father's Day gift for my daughter, Ellie. Um, so I thought it's going to be on the live with us. Why not have another Yeti on the live? Um, but no, some wonderful comments. Um, Heather contacted Andy. Must be not long after we set up Evertrek. Uh, yeah, it was a long time ago, Heather, wasn't it? Worried about my fitness. Can't remember his reply, but I talked myself out of booking a trip. Well, I didn't do my job properly, did I? Uh, I was going to say, what um, did you tell her? <laughs> but fast forward a few years, we've done Killy, Machu Picchu, and um, with Evertrack, and often kicked myself to have left it so long. No, it, well, Heather, you know, we always, it's great that you've gone on those trips. And, you know, at the end of the day, the time was right, you yeah. know, when it was right. And you, um, yeah, it's great to to have you on those trips, mate, um, and, and and fulfill some of your, your dreams. But, yeah, and and I suppose to, to, to people out there who are thinking about it, I know there's a lot of Evertrackers on here, We've already been on trips with us, which is fantastic. Yeah, some new. Um, yeah, it's 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 kind of that. It's addictive. I think once you go on these kind of trips and and you get excited and and, and obviously you you can achieve it or you just experience it. And when you come back, it only takes a couple of weeks. We are sitting down, a cup of tea, or and you're like, I need another adventure. No, yeah, you know I'm, I mean? I'm adventure starved <laughs> at the minute. It's weird because we go, we do travel a lot, and sometimes I think, oh, it'd be so nice just to like chill at home for a little while. Yeah, and then I, I never you get the itch. You get the I itch. never I never managed to actually do that for very long before I think. Yeah. Do you know what? I've got to get out and do something. I'm starting to go a bit mad. Um, <laughs> yeah, one of the other things that's come up, and I think someone has mentioned it yeah, as well, yeah. and it is probably I think one of the third biggest okay. fears, particularly around if you're traveling to Nepal, is the bridges. Yeah, so about the heights, um, about the heights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's a big one. We've it's had a couple one. of people, you yeah. know, go out there and um you know call in beforehand and and have those concerns about yeah you know they're deathly afraid of heights and they're worried about just getting to the bridge and just stopping dead and not being yeah. able to continue and that's a tricky one to get over because it's easier almost if someone says i'm worried about my fitness because yeah however fit you are you can probably always do more um and we can you know have a look at it and think okay yeah break it down when it comes to breaking down a fear like that it's far more complex it's rooted in different places the one thing that I always can say is there's a lot of things you can do to kind of alleviate the fear. A lot of people try things like hypnosis and therapies yeah, yeah. and all types of stuff. What I can speak to is what we do on the treks. Yeah. Um, and I can tell you that you need to put your faith in the guide. Yeah. Um, they really are the best in the business. Um, and you're never going to be left on your own at a point stranded <coughs> in the middle of a bridge, 
too afraid to move forward or back. What will happen is that the guide, if you tell them in advance, listen, I'm really worried about bridges, they yeah. can send someone ahead and just stop any oncoming traffic for you and then just hand on the shoulder and just confidently walk you across. Yeah. Even if you want to just close your eyes, <clears throat> they can guide you. Um, or a buff over your eyes like Thomas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I brought it on there, Thomas. I thought that's a really good example because, yeah. um, you know, it, it, it's quite common, isn't it? You know, because yeah. they are high bridges. Can't get around it. It's um, it's it's an additional challenge mm -hmm. to get in there if, if you know, like we were Max, our good friend uh, Max, about, was it, just over four years ago? Yeah. And he was... um. He was not liking those bridges, no. But he got across them, even though he was shaking. Yeah, you know, with a guide there, and 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 he did it, and he felt you could see it made him feel quite good. Yeah. Afterwards, knowing that he'd he'd done that. Yeah. No. And it it, it yeah. and I think if you look at him, the way he was at the beginning, which was horrendously terrified, and then by the end, almost relaxed, completely relaxed. With yeah, I know it's completely different. It is it? tricky. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's crazy, it is tricky. Yeah. And even on Kilimanjaro, there's yeah. a few exposed sections. You've got the um, Barranco wall yeah. that if you're afraid of heights, I can foresee being a little bit of an, um, a fear that you might have. Yeah. But again, that's what the guides are there for. You know, that's yeah. why one of the reasons why our trips are all guided is because we want you to extract the maximum amount of experience from the adventure whilst also having that safety net of yeah. someone who's been there, done that, highly experienced and qualified, watching you, looking at you, making sure that you're not going to, you know, do anything strange. So at the bottom of whatever fear you have, you should always have the fact that it is safe. You are being looked after and you've got to trust in the guide. And I think that's the only advice that I can give from our side of things yeah. with regards to getting over that fear. But certainly there's a lot of stuff you can do, isn't there? Hypnotherapy, I heard, is Yeah, good. there's. I mean, there's, there's, there's a, you know, thousand and one different ways. I mean, geez, you, you put into Google on the internet, there's always someone that says they can solve this and do this. I mean, there's, there's so many things that, you know, that, um, that are out there that, that can, that can assist you. Um, you know, some of them, you know, don't, don't try all of them, <laughs> but there's certainly a lot of, of good ones out there. I, uh, um, I, I cured almost a little fear of heights. Yeah. Not massively afraid how of heights. Did... I, I have zero fear of heights at the minute. So how did um? But um, you know, how did that work? It was exposure to it repeatedly in an environment where I was okay. too embarrassed to admit nice. that I was afraid. So I worked on the railway, and they had these big gantries that go over the railway. Yeah. That um, they they wobble in the wind, and you have to climb up a ladder. They're really nice. exposed. And the first time I ever went up one, I remember on a shift I was climbing up it, and I was terrified, like I was having like yeah. almost an anxiety attack. And then when I got to the top, I was practically shaking. But I was, I don't know, I was too, like, embarrassed to say that so I could, you know, because you're working with a bunch of lads. And then... Yeah, but that's hard, though, isn't it? Because you've got those social norms and you're yeah. kind of trying to break out of that and say, yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually bricking it right now. But two of the things I did, <laughs> one of them was I was looking at what my colleagues were doing mm. and I took comfort in the fact that they felt completely relaxed. And the other thing that I did was over time I had to go up and down these every night for months yeah. and weeks and years. And it just went away. Nice. So maybe there's a so level, yeah, maybe, maybe I think maybe a climbing center or something might help you, you know, by, by getting over it. Yeah. It's, um, I'm just reading through this as well. Anthony Christian. Hey, Anthony, how you doing? Nice to see you back. Although you weren't first this week. <laughs> um, I really struggle and stress over flights. Um, essentially. So I'm just, so I'm just reading your message. Uh, leaves on 13th. Happy we're getting there early. Just exploring Kathmandu. Yeah. Um, flights is, is certainly one, isn't it? I mean, um, I know a lot of people who don't like flying. I mean, they, they do travel a lot, but because they're like, well, I, I kind of have to fly and I'll, I'll struggle through it. My, my stepmom Amanda's um, um, one like that. And uh, we, we just literally um, encouraged her to go over to the States next year, which is, is awesome for my dad's 60th. And, um, you know, for her to go on like a 10 hour flight is unthinkable, but she's doing it because of, of what, you know, she's going to be able to do an, an experience and create some memories, um, which is amazing. And I think, yeah, it's hard, isn't it? When you've got those, mm. those fears and, and, they, and they can hold you back from so much, but you know, it's only human, um, you know, to get those things. Um, but I suppose the other side of fear is, is something we, we can all aim for, um, you know, because we all have those thoughts and those doubts, but the other side of fear, is enjoyment and success and 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 all that stuff that comes with it. Just got to almost get to that tipping point and push yourself and and, and you're through it. Um, and sometimes yeah, just, that takes longer than others. Yeah, I'm thinking about the exposure side of things. Maybe I can get a like air crash investigation <laughs> or something to uh, like to watch that. 
maybe there might be. I mean, if you've got an Evertrek buff, why don't you just wear that? <laughs> you yeah. don't know you're on the plane. Oh, I love. Ever watched the A team? Uh, B.A. Baracus, they got him on a plane sometimes. You see, I, I, I got no problem with flying. It doesn't bother yeah, me yeah. at all, except for the fact that I find it crushingly boring. Yeah. So I just sleep. <laughs> you so, do sleep a lot on planes. That, that is uh, it's the best way. True. It's like time travel. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, awesome. Uh, I was having a quick look. So what I know. We I, I, on the well, I'm just one? going through some of the comments. We've got Tony Davis as well. Um, my friend was white as a sheet the morning off the Branco War. Couldn't eat. Couldn't speak. Turned out other than the summit, to be his favourite day. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, and Tony, like, great and not so great to hear, because, yeah, it must have been challenging to, to have that. And I can see Branca Wall's a bit of a beast. Yeah. But actually, agreed, it's one of our most favourite parts on the Lamosha route. Yeah, no, I have I, I, I If if, uh, if and when I go back to Kilimanjaro, I'm going to be really looking forward to that particular day. Yeah. Um, yeah, I see Mark Drummond says vaccinations for me. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get it. Like, I, it was funny, like, I'm not afraid of needles at all. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't like it. I don't like vaccinations. They're not, they're not my, I'd say that they're not on my top five experiences of life. I get They're almost a necessity, right? <laughs> I, get, I get like real anxiety. When really? They, because yeah. everyone thinks because you, if you've got tattoos, you're afraid, but it's different. Really? It's not yeah. an injection. I suppose it's, yeah, different levels. I don't like it. That's also, fair. I think I had one and my arm went dead for like a week. Yeah, it was quite a, Powerful one, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure what it was actually. I can't remember now, but I remember I had a dead arm for like a week. Wow. But yeah, no, unfortunately, again, vaccinations, that's one of them where in order to get over that fear, I just uh I Google Don't look. <laughs> um well, I just jump on Wikipedia and do a quick search of rabies and things like that. Wow. And, um, okay, so the uh, essentially if you don't know the vaccination, what happens after knowledge dispels fear, you that see. That's true. That's true. And uh when, Very I, when true. I learned that about way. funny enough, when I learned about rabies, my fear of the jab completely dispelled. <laughs> and, and, all I, and all I was left with was the desire to not have rabies. It's, it's <laughs> really interesting though, and, and some and some great comments here. Um I think Andrew, Andrew Scott, how you doing? EBC was the first time I came across sleep apnea, quite frightening. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's definitely situational fear, fear that you're like, oh my God, what's happening to my body right now? Um, and I suppose, again, going back to what Dave said there around knowledge, is that sleep apnea, um, and essentially, you know, sometimes you're asleep and you're like, <gasps> you know, you're like gasp. It, it's quite common at altitude. Um, essentially, your body is, is, is adjusting. Um, try not to get too worried about it unless it's happening like, you know, like a dozen times an evening. Um, then, you know, have a chat with your guide and, yeah. and you know, yeah, um, you know, check, check some of your, your stats and, and see how you're doing. Diamox um, helps with that. Yeah, it does. Yeah, Diamox, yeah, right, yeah. And Diamox. Diamox is another Diamox. thing that we can all use. Um, I use it on Kilimanjaro. I've had absolutely zero trouble on EBC. Yeah. But on Kilimanjaro, um, yeah, decided to uh, join Team Diamox. But you got the summit, yeah, and I did. And this is this is why I really do believe that looking up, looking up, and learning as much as you can about what you're doing, yeah, um, really helps. I can't. Yeah. I mean, it works for me. Some people might think ignorance is bliss, you know. But for me, when I was on Kilimanjaro, when I started to feel a bit rough, and I recognised the symptoms above and beyond what I was used to, and I was like, oh, okay, so I, I'm, in my mind, it was like a spectrum, and it's like, okay, the needles move just slightly north of where I'm comfortable with. I'm going to take Diamox now just to bring things back into comfortability. And, you know, the most important thing is I get to the summer with my friends, and I did. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, mate, one experience. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, I think it was uh, Sophie. I think you're asking about, uh, is this to do with the, oh, no, actually it was Jerome. Sorry, Jerome. Um, hi, Sophie. I had a tent all to myself on Killy Wellworth, the small expense. Yeah, definitely. You can do. Um, yeah, Sophie, drop us a message if you want a single supplement tent. Um, yeah, we can we can add that on. Uh, it, yeah, certainly if it's um, saying that, if I, I was going to say, if you want to avoid any snorers, I think because obviously it's only canvas, um, mm. you can still hear people next door to you. But yeah, I know you mean it's nice to have your own space. But um, also as well, I mean, you know, we're talking about maybe fears and things like that. Actually, I think just from my own personal experience about sharing with other trekkers, it is because the tents, you know, they're, 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 there's more enough room to have um uh basically like two um uh two sleeping bags you know two mats and then all the bags down the middle mm. so you've got kind of your own little divvied up space yeah um it works it definitely definitely works but it's nice as well to have someone there to chat to especially if there's things on your mind obviously you can do that anyway outside of it but sometimes you know if you wake up in the middle of the night and you're not feeling well someone there to to kind of to be there for you as well um 
just something to think about. Obviously, we can we can we can get the the ten yeah. sorted. Um, hey Joel, how you doing? Nice to join on the on the live. Yeah, and it's certainly um, yeah something we can we can do as well. And um, yeah, I, like for me 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 and Dave shared on Killy, and um, luckily I had really really heavy duty earplugs. Mm. Um, but you were kind enough to borrow me your sleeping mat. Yeah, the comfortable one. Swings the teeth and swings around. If, if we weren't sharing, you know, those exactly. those things might not have happened. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't mind sharing with someone. I think yeah. it. I think it's always um, all right. I think you're kind of lucky sometimes. I think because we we've yeah. shared so many rooms together. Like it's got to be in the hundreds now. That we're kind of used to each other now. So like, yeah, I suppose we are. Aren't we? Like yeah, yeah. like whatever happens. It's just like, yeah, well, I, 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 there's no surprises sharing a room with Andy. The only, like... Is this I, the hidden secrets now, is it? Around yeah, sharing? yeah. Actually, <laughs> what, what happens in the tent stays in the tent, right? But um, but no, it is it is good. And yeah. I think, um, yeah, there is there is certainly, like, plus points to yeah. sharing and things like that. Because, like, what big one you said is it does give you that kind of little bit of um, comfort knowing someone's there. And if you have, like, does. a problem in the night that you can sort of alert them and stuff like that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I um, I think I'd like to try it on uh, with a solo tent just to see to see what the experience is like being on your own at night. In uh, well, I was at Machu Picchu last year. Um, you know, I had I had my own tent, and it was yeah. Don't get me wrong; it's nice to have your own space. Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, it is nice to have your own space, and you have got a bit more room to unpack and stuff. And um, but yeah, th there are so many benefits to sharing. But you know, yeah. we, that's what we we can accommodate for for both, obviously. Yeah, um, but no, some really cool comments i think someone mentioned as well so i i, I want to make sure that we, we cover some of these um who was it was it someone mentioned around the cold if it's you uh, lee like... wyatt has said that he spooned a man and he's not ashamed to say it. if it's cold it's cold wow okay yeah were you the big spoon or the little spoon that's um <laughs> uh who was it oh sit out i think it was sit out was i was scared of the cold and the toilet situation yeah exactly um common common things mm. um Certainly with a cold, you know, because you, know, you want to make sure you're comfortable and we're going to some harsh environments, um, whether that's Kilimanjaro, whether that's Everest Base Camp, you know, even on Machu Picchu, um, you know, on, on the Tomakea route, I, I, I woke up six inches of snow <laughs> and, you know, it was cold. Um, uh, and, and you're kind of thinking, well, I mean, I'm on the edge of the Amazon here. Surely it should be mm. quite warm. But this is the mountains, you know, it, it makes its own weather sometimes. Um, so, yeah, but being prepared for the cold, I think. Uh, especially if it's on your mind there, you just want to, as long as you make sure you've got the right gear and you're prepared for it and thinking, okay, I'm an accept. Okay. I'm going to feel a little bit cold um, because I'm going to that sit, you know, cause I'm uh, going to that situation. I love the and, cold. Um, and, and yeah, and like you said, you, you, you can approach it from that way and say, you know what? It's the cold. I love it. I'm going to, my hands are cold with gloves on, you know, and approach it that way. The only time I don't like being too cold is if I'm not moving and not doing anything yeah like waking up and trekking and being on a trekking experience in the cold is like my ideal scenario <laughs> yeah agreed, Although agreed yeah. i do remember one particular day in france during an apre session um where i i bought lightweight gloves with me oh yeah i had to borrow your mind yeah and, and i had to borrow andy's gloves because this, like, happens. this happens well it was an emergency i could i could, <laughs> I could hardly hold my pint because my hand was going numb and you know that is life or death and andy was like pretty much andy had, andy had these warm gloves and he was like sorry can you not hold your pint and it was like everyone stop this is an emergency <laughs> and then it was kind of like there you go mate there you go get that down yeah <laughs> well it worked yeah no it's good that was um it's still, still one of my favorite uh, memories that was going. Well, you gotta, you gotta look after people. You gotta look after. Well, people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so, if you said that is an actual emergency. Yeah. Um, Dave, what have we got? Yeah, I, I feel like there's a giveaway coming away. Coming yeah. Away. So one of the things that we wanted to talk about, yeah. um, and we kind of teased it. Um, I'm just gonna. This isn't a post-it that I'm putting there, and if you see me looking down, it's not because I'm reading. <laughs> <laughs> um, we teased it last week, um, but it, we're going to be launching um, a Cliff giveaway. Loads of you yeah. might have seen that we have a really, really cool association with Cliff Bars. Um, we've always used them for years, um, and so we were really pleased to sort of reach out and get the connection with them. Rosie particularly has been a really big driving force behind that. Yep. Um, and they've sent us some awesome prizes and stuff like that that we're going to launch. So the competition is going to be a real kind of fun caption contest. Yeah. Um, we've got three awesome prizes, um, you know, like lots of, you know, sort of yummy goodies and uh, merch and stuff like that. Um, is that your writing, yummy goodies? No, that was off the cuff. <laughs> and um, 
yeah so we're going to be um uh announcing the winner of yeah. the capturing contest on next week's tti yeah with a gentleman called craig, craig not from cliff. cliff definitely didn't look over there to read his name either um <laughs> yeah and um yeah so it's going to be going live afterwards yeah um on this and there is something else that i'm supposed to say but i can't remember well yeah no honestly we're really excited to have craig on um you have to talk about all things cliff bars um you know and yeah this is going to be a great i can see you finding out what else to say <laughs> um but yeah essentially um yeah cliff have been a, a really good partner around the track for for some time now um and you know we, we felt it was only right to get them on the, the tuesday tune in um and craig has, has, has obviously given us his time um and some freebies as well so yeah. as dave said that you know next week we can do that i think it's posting after the live it'll be in the high altitude ever trackers group because this is just purely on facebook um is that what they said that's what i was fine <laughs> I, 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 I remember I, I remember is, is, it, is it just on facebook or just on instagram it's just on facebook Zach this pointed one. at me and made me commit that to memory and it's evaporated immediately <laughs> but you know what just on facebook you know that was his fear and uh he's he's had to learn to get over that <laughs> brilliant but yeah no i'm really, really kind of, i'm really kind of excited about that because cliff are awesome um i use them a lot because their bars actually come with pieces of cliff inside them wow. so when you eat you are actually you are part of the mountain that's interesting I never yeah they never that. told me that nor did i no you sure that's not like nuts no no that's, that's okay. fact that is yeah right uh, we'll they, have to, they've got have they've got this. vast farms where they grow <laughs> cliffs um, and, and Brian makes a good point there. Caption time. I can see me going to Facebook jail again. Yeah, I mean, be careful with those captions. Um, Dave Remington, I'm not mentioning your name. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely with a cap. Uh, cap we, all, we like a good caption contest, don't we? Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, have fun with that. That'll be on the group um, just after we've finished on the live. So good luck. And um, like I said, Lee Craig will be with us next week. Lee Wyatt has asked what a caption contest is, but I don't know with him. Is he winding me up or does he genuinely not know? <laughs> He knows. Do you reckon? Yeah. I'm not 100% convinced. You Lee, never know if you with don't, him. ask Dave Rimington. He knows, or Bry, they know exactly what kind of constitutes a good level of caption. Yeah. Um, I'm sure Bry or Dave and, and some of the other Yetis who, who have been part of this over the years um, can share. Um, but no, it is, uh, be careful. Though. Don't go to Facebook jail. That's, that's not good. We, we want you to keep you on here um, instead of going elsewhere. Right. We've got, what have we got? About 20 odd minutes. So, mm -hmm. A couple of things around, I mean, I, I know, drag you away from the fun stuff, but I just want to, uh, you know, obviously finish off stuff around the fears and and some of the things potentially stopping you from, from going on adventures. Um, we've talked about maybe some health stuff as well, mm -hmm. which I think is important to cover because yeah, no. I think a lot of people are worried about health. And I'm not talking about just the altitude now, but maybe about because you've got some condition that you then don't want to go to or an injury. Um, which is 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 a hundred percent like right because you gotta look after your body um and health is is everything um and you know it, it's good to get that checked out mm. and but also as well on the flip side of it you know we've had a lot of people with injuries and health conditions who've who've done yeah. these challenges i don't um, i don't think i've done a trip where i haven't been nursing an issue <laughs> first time i went uh, to ebc only time the only time yeah yeah it's yeah because what was it the third Fourth time we went to have a space camp together, you had um, shingles, didn't you? Oh, that was a bowel of laughs. That was <laughs> that's my one advice I think I would give to anyone that if you do have shingles and you have a yeah. trip, just contact us and we'll reschedule you. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, don't, don't go with shingles. It's, it's an uh, absolute nightmarishly bad condition. Well, because I didn't know anything about it, I was like, it's just a painful rash, and I'll deal with that. But it's so much more. It nukes your body, man. It's so hard. But I did it, and I reached DBC. Exactly. It's all good. And then but chop, yeah, chop a club on the way back. Chop a club. Well, well, only on the Actually, last day. No, no, no. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. But like um. It wasn't exactly the flight of the Valkyries, was it? No, no, no. And and the thing is, I met a, I met a Nuge at Namshi, and I'm like, I know he ain't walking. <laughs> That's true. Well, <laughs> the Nuge's actually here this week, isn't he? He's um, yeah, he's good flown over from Nepal. Um, got a good catch up, um, obviously because it's um, uh, it's mid season for us now. It's monsoon over in Nepal um, in sort of June, July, and August. So um, yeah, Nuge who, who looks after our operations over in Nepal, um, he's having some downtime. So yeah, he's heading over. Um, he's uh, he's been around Europe and he's he's coming to coming to Wales. Um, be great to see him. Yeah, it's been no, a really important. Him. But yeah, going back onto the health stuff and yes, things like yeah. that. Yeah, it is a little bit um, yeah. annoying because a lot of us have picked up stuff, you know, that that can potentially hamper a trip, whether it be a sort of an injury or an illness or a chronic condition. Yeah. Um, the one thing I will say is that I'm continually impressed by people um, 
who are able to kind of overcome those things. Yeah. And really, when you see some of the things that people do, you know, summit in Everest with like, you know, double amputees and stuff like that. Yeah, it's massively inspiring. Um, it? You'd be amazed what you can achieve, even if you do have to manage an issue. And we're always happy to lend a hand as well. Yeah. Like we've had some people that perhaps have let us know about an issue and we thought, well, do you know what? That would be really handy to have some extra porter support on there yeah, to help, to, you know, because we there is things we can do to manage the load and the itinerary. Yeah. You know, so if you are um, if you're able to do it, but, you you know, you can't carry a heavy backpack and, or yeah. you know, we can deal with that. If you need an extra day here or there, I'm certain we can work it out. Yeah. Um, most important thing is for us that if you do have an issue is all you got to do is get the doctor to say yes and get your insurance company to say yes. And if those two things happen, then there's no reason why we would say no. We'd be more than happy to get you out there and get you achieving something awesome. Well, that's it, isn't it? We, we, we hate to say no um or ever track we're always like okay well how can we make this happen you know and there's there's always a way there's always a way we can do it obviously we you don't want um you know, the det detriment to your health but we can we can definitely um sort something out um you know with like dave like dave said there we've had a lot of people some people with severe disabilities and, and they've, they've, they've brought like a team of carers with them um you know, got to Everest Base Camp, which was like massively inspiring, which was actually quite emotional, wasn't it? When mm -hmm. we um we met a gent, um, uh, Martin at uh, the hotel, and it was just, yeah, very powerful. Who was his um yeah, was his no. stepdad, and yeah, absolutely amazing, um, and you know, just just wonderful, just really wonderful, wonderful stories. Yeah, Jerome is worrying about his arthritic hip. Jerome, that's, reinforce it with some stone. Jerome. That's that's been arthritic <laughs> since EBC and Killy, so I wouldn't worry about it, mate. You know, just uh, just ignore it. But yeah, Jane has said um, sciatic flare-ups and things like yeah. that. Honestly, happen, it's yeah. it's these things can happen. Yeah, I think it's it is actually quite remarkable sometimes how you can have these kind of issues, and when you go on the trek itself, they yeah. actually feel the best they've ever been because you're forced. <laughs> it's interesting, to, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Honest to God, like. Yeah. I had remember how bad my back used to be a while back. Yeah, when, yeah, yeah. Like one time he had to pull me out of a plane seat. That's right. It just yeah, and you would, yeah, just collapsed there. Yeah, yeah. And when we went to Killy, yeah. um, when I did Kilimanjaro and I got off the plane and it was so stiff and all of a sudden it just kind of went. And the customs guy was like calling me over and I was like, no, no, I can't. And he's like, come over. I was like, I can't. I know and he's thinking, me really is this suspicious. a concern? <laughs> but actually, by the time I yeah. finished the trek, it was great. Yeah. And it's because you're kind of in an environment where you're going to be eating well, resting well. You're going to be exercising yeah. every day, which is the key for me. And I think keeping the body moving and exercising every day, yeah. but in a very managed and controlled state, it, it makes me feel 10 times better. I never feel as healthy as I do when I come back off the track. Isn't it interesting? But I, I feel a lot of that as well is to do with the physicality of it. And um, and actually, you know, if you've got like, like although we run um, a trekking company, a lot of our uh, job is is, is office-based um you know we're sat at a desk and and sometimes you know just getting away from that and you know the day-to-day -day and walking all day for like so 11 12 days eating really good food really healthy food being in a really awesome place good for the soul mm -hmm. and it's good for your body <laughs> um you know and sometimes uh you know especially the the first time i went to base camp and and at the time this is a long time ago i was, I was carrying a little bit of uh, extra timber um, and I lost uh, just over a stone going mm. over his base camp. And because you're drinking sort of four, four liters a day of water, your skin feels great, you know, because this is something you should be doing on a daily basis. But four liters, there's a lot of water to drink when you're, you're sat in an office, as an example, um, you know, or you're at home. And, and, and sometimes being on these trips, it's actually good for you um, in terms of your body. And it may not feel like it when you're suffering with the altitude or you're, you're tired and things like yeah. that. But you know, I, I think these kind of opportunities to put yourself out there and, um, you know, and, and and challenge yourself. And I think Adam mentioned there, worried about his diabetes on the EBC trek, and it was actually the best it's ever been. No issues. Probably, See, and that's, that's no surprise. Probably a really that. good diet. Exactly. You know, because yeah. you do it's eat mad. you do eat a little bit better, and you have less mm. of the. There's pretty much no junk food there. Uh, but actually, talking about um, losing weight on trips, John, our friend, the great ball, <laughs> he gained weight on Kilimanjaro. <laughs> That's mad. Well, the food's so good. They do feed you so well. well on on Kili, it is. It is you know, and you need it. You need the fuel. Um, uh, that's the that. one thing I'm so thankful of is that I never lose my appetite and altitude. Yeah, no matter yeah. how I feel, even on the day when I felt a bit rough when we got to Lava Tower, yeah. I was in there, I was like, oh, I don't feel very well. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> you know, so so um, and I, that's why I always make sure I sit next to you. Yeah, that's it. And, and and one of the things um, our altitude that 
I've just accepted over the years uh, because I've luckily never had any bad altitude issues. Um, you know, being a, going to Everest, which I've, I've been to Everest five times. Um, but one thing that always happens is I do lose my appetite. Um, not massively, you know, when you're talking one meal a day, I'm just like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm okay. But again, it's something that I, I know my body uh, that, that happens each time I, mm-hmm. I accept it to force some down because mm. I know I've got to eat the fuel because tomorrow I'm going to be just lethargic. Um, but Dave always sits next to me and mm. is literally just looking like this. Yeah, like that. If I, see any, if I see any chips, the good Waiting. thing. Waiting. Yeah. And as soon as he goes, <sighs> I'm like, well, there you go. Thank you very much. Like, so I'll, uh... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, nothing goes to waste, right? It's, it's, it's all good. No, food is fuel. But um, again, and that, that just comes from a, a bit of knowledge around because I've, I've been at altitude, you know, for quite a long time in my life. Um, you know, you, you just know how to manage your, oh, your body. Yes, he is on here. Yes, he. Yes, he. How are you doing? One of. Um... Jumbo, One of the very best guides on Kilimanjaro. If you um, yeah. head out there and you're lucky enough to have Yessi, what an amazing guy! Love that guy. Strong heart, strong mind. I'm, I'm trying to remember the rest now. Yessi's going to be telling us off. <laughs> uh, don't no. think it, just dream it. Power, Power to, to the people. people. Yeah, nice, nice. What well, a remember, man, Dave. Ah, never forget. <laughs> Always great to have one of our Evertrek guides on the on the live. Um, yeah, and I think. Also, as well, a big part of it, and something we haven't covered actually, which I got written down here because we covered lots of it, is the the bit about you. That some people think they can't do it. Mm. You know, they think it's it's too much in terms of yeah. for them. You know, based on like maybe they might be maybe they've done a three peaks challenge in, in the UK or they're out and about in the mountains. What would you say to to kind of though that kind of bracket of people? I can't do it. It's, it's not enough for me. Yeah, I would say, honestly, that self-limiting belief is something that I think yeah. a lot, a lot of people have. Yeah. And I can promise you it's largely circumstantial. I had it myself. Okay. I, I genuinely had this belief that I would never, ever be able to do go trekking in the Himalaya. That's something yeah. that other people did. It's not something that people like me, my background and my health and my status did. Yeah. How would I get the time off work? Yeah. I'm not That's fit good, enough. Yeah. When have I got time to train? Mm. You know, oh yeah, but they're probably all, they're probably yeah. all mega yeah. rich millionaires. I'm not that guy. Yeah, you know, like oh, a lot of these things, and you know, I, there's no way I'm fit enough. Yeah, you know, and then honestly, one thing that really helped me was you just got to put like I don't know why it's almost like I'm pig headed in this respect. I'll just carry on regardless, <laughs> right? And I honestly think that a good way. when you break it down, you think, well, let's. Actually, why do I think that way? Yeah. Why do I think that I can't do these things? For me, there was a lightning rod moment where like, my idea just hit the ground and became real was when I saw that you went. Yeah. And me and you sort of worked together and we were friends in the past. Yeah, and yeah. then we got separate jobs and went separate ways. Yeah, life happened. And, yeah. But on Facebook, I saw that you had posted a picture and you were posting your blog that you were writing. Yeah. And I was like, what's he doing? What's he up to? <laughs> and so I looked at his blog and I was like, my god <laughs> i was like i was like he's doing he's he's going to the himalaya and immediately then i was kind of like well we've got very similar background we had mm. the same job we lived in the same sort of place we had the same sort of lifestyle i was like well why can't i do it then yeah and then i don't know why but it just dawned on me that anyone can do it anyone yeah, they can and one of the things that really helped me as well um was a book recommendation from your wife jen yeah yeah called atomic habits Book, um, and book. it was really good. And it, it, I think that's a remarkable book. Um, again, they'll never send me a free copy or anything. They yeah. didn't know whatever it ever does. But basically, it's about changing your perception of yourself and what you can achieve by doing tiny little changes. Nothing really significant at any one time. But all those yeah. tiny changes add up to something big. So if you want to be an adventurer and you want to go hiking in the Himalaya, but you think that's not me, well, the first thing to correct is that decision in your brain that that's not like you no no if you identify as someone that wants to go trekking in the himalaya then you are that person yeah and then you think well how do i make it happen well i'm not quite fit enough well i'm gonna walk for half an hour a day that's easy all i gotta do is leave my door walk for 15 minutes in one direction turn around and walk back nice easy and if you do that for a few weeks i guarantee you before long you'll be doing an hour half an hour that way half an hour back and then you'll think to yourself i wonder if i can beat my time so you might jog a little bit one way and jog a little bit back. This is exactly how I got fit and lost all my weight was that exact way of doing things. Nice. And within a year, 
I had completely transformed into someone I don't even recognize now. I need to get back to those little habits. Yeah, who is but, that but where I could, uh, yeah, <laughs> but where I could cycle 100 miles, I could run 13 or 15. Yeah. And I went to Everest Base Camp, and all of a sudden, I believed I was. And all I did, first of all, was change two things. I decided that I wanted to do it, and I walked for half an hour a day. Love it, Dave. Remarkable. Uh, and it's interesting, you know, and, and, and that's a good point. And just when you started there around, you know, okay, you decided that you wanted to do it, which is, is yeah. a big thing, you know, deciding. Making decisions in, in life can be quite hard. And especially when there's many things to think about. You've got a family, you've got responsibilities, job, money. You know, we've got all this stuff that's part of um part of life, right? Um, and sometimes you've got to, you know, you've got to definitely um try and make some sacrifices to make these dreams happen. Yeah. Um, but they are reachable, they are achievable. And um, yeah, it's great. I mean, you know, with regards to um uh, to Dave seeing seeing my post and you know, I'm I love that. And it sparked a lot of conversations that eventually took us on a very, very long journey to where we are today. Yeah, that's it. Many, many <laughs> moons ago. But... Yeah, which is amazing, really. And, and and I think, I also think as well, imagine what you can do. Uh, imagine the family members. Imagine the the people who know you and what you can do to inspire others as well. Like, you know, what, you know, just by putting it on social media and and, and, and talking about it and saying, and, you know, maybe what challenging it is, that might inspire somebody else to want to go. It and do really it as well. does. That's my really? one thing that I hope people take from these like um, videos and podcasts and things yeah. like that. If they just see one thing and or hear one thing that makes them like, you know, me reading your blog, if they if yeah. that has the same reaction, that's brilliant. And you will inspire people. I promise you. Yeah. Andy went. So I went. So my dad went. So my friend John, he's done base camp twice and Kilimanjaro. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's got, he's got, he's got the, uh, the and intro. then, and then. <laughs> Uh, and then there's like a wide circle of friends now that have all done these amazing things just because they saw me do it. And I did it because I saw you do it. Mm. And maybe you'll do it because we talked about it and you saw us do it. And <laughs> it's, then, it's yeah, crazy, that'd be amazing. It? It, it is. It is fantastic. And, uh, you know, um, obviously we, we're, we're talking about many different things here. And, um, you know, it's great talking about these stories as well. And, and, and you know, knowing a lot of you on the on the call um, today, um, you know, it's great to see your journeys as well. And, you know, you start your journey maybe kind of three, four, five years ago now. Some of you have been with us since the beginning. Um, you know, and we set the company up back in, um, you know, 2016, which is crazy now. It seems like a, a kind of different life. But, um, you know, it's, it's wonderful then to see where you are now and the things you're doing. And honestly, we're, we're all very, very proud of, of our other trackers. Yeah. Um, and yeah, sorry, we're, we're, I think Tom is, I think Thomas is trying to book in. Yeah, Thomas, definitely drop us an email. We'll, we'll make sure that you're, you're sorted. We've, um, I said to all the, sorry, segue in, into, into tech. Um, yeah, we've recently kind of moved over to, in the last couple of months, to a new booking system. Still some um, gremlins we're having in there, unfortunately, um, over the last kind of uh, couple of weeks. Um, and huge apologies if, if that's been you trying to log into your members area or, trying to book a trip or trying to do something. Um, I'll say that the dev team are working really hard. They're coming down to our offices next week as well. So we can we can get some some of the, the fun stuff um, kind of developed in, in what we call phase two. Um, you know, and it's, um, it, we're really excited. We've got some really cool stuff we want to move forward with. Um, but yeah, apologies if you're having any issues. Like I said, if you could drop us an email, one of us can go do it. We'll do it the old school way. Let's get on the phone and just, just get you booked in. Yeah. Um, sometimes, you know, the, the, the tech side doesn't doesn't work so well. Obviously, we're, we're developing that and making sure that uh, that gets better. Yeah. Um, so thanks, uh, Thomas, for, for bearing with us. Let's get that adventure in the diary, mate. Awesome. Um, and thanks, Jerome, as well. And that is what separates. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to leave that there. Family. Exactly. It's, um, you know, it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Um, uh, running a. A wonderful company, but it's all about our ever trackers, all about our customers. Um, that's the way it should be. Um, right, not to get too mushy before we leave. <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm good. I, I worry about Jerome because that Jerome, because you, you don't know how easy it is. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I, I'm easily triggered by um, certain things, but it's, it's all good. It's all good stuff. Like breeze. Breeze. That's the most beautiful breeze I've ever. Had. <laughs> Sunrise, sunset, not oceans, mountains, beaches. It's, I, I don't know. I, uh, Good, a, a nice manicured green. That's true, actually. I do like. I do like. Um, I am a golfist, as Dave calls me. Golfist, uh, yeah. <laughs> really golf bats. Uh, what's that say? Once an ever tracker, always an ever tracker. Hey, definitely, Lee. Definitely. Yeah. Um, but right, just to kind of bring everything together, then. So just to kind of swing back to what we talked about the um, 
the the, the beginning of the call, which was around uh, you cool. know fears. I, I say call. <laughs> I don't know why I'm used to that live. <laughs> I've said call twice. Oh, yeah. Let's swing back just to kind of round it up. I mean, Dave, how would you kind of summarize it when it comes to fears then? I mean, I think we, we've talked a lot, a lot of big stuff. I think it's completely and totally natural yeah. and normal and to have fears about going and doing anything that you don't normally do in your everyday life. Yeah. You know, that could be anything, particularly if it involves traveling to a far flung part of the world to do something you've yeah. never done before. Um, so yeah, I think one is don't beat yourself up about if you have any objections or fears or concerns about doing <clears> stuff, <throat> but equally don't treat them like blockages, treat them like challenges yep. understand that every challenge can be broken down into manageable chunks and that you do have a massive support network around you of friends, family and Evertrek and Evertrek's family and friends and all of our knowledge. Yep. So if you decide you want to do something, you've got an incredible engine behind you, pushing you forward. And I honestly think there's nothing that can't be done. And I do love that amazing attitude. Um, you know, at the risk of plugging a competitor, I do like it when Nims way back in the day said he was going to do all 14 peaks in under seven months. And I remember thinking, not possible. Can't be done. Well, that's when he changed the name of his project. Exactly. It's a project. And, and then he went in, and then he went and did it. And now there's <laughs> someone else trying to beat it. And yeah, then and yeah. then and other people are doing other things. Um, it's the Roger Bannister effect, isn't it? You know, when when he did the four minute mile. Oh right, and yeah. he achieved I, it. I forgot. Who that was. Sorry, mate. I know yeah, it's a long yeah, time yeah. ago. <laughs> no. Um, and then what was it? Within the next six months, like several other people did it. Yeah. But he was the first, and he, because he showed that it can be done, other people followed him. It's amazing. I'm telling you, if someone's going to do a sub two hour marathon, right, and yeah, then yeah. I guarantee you, it's going to be smashed. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know. So, Agreed. and although they are grand and huge examples, they do apply to us as individuals, yeah. you know, so if there is something that you want to do, I guarantee you it's possible. It's just a question of how and when, yeah. and we can make it happen. Fantastic. Well, look, um, really, really great live today. Um, I really enjoyed that. I thought there's um, some lovely comments. Great to see um, some familiar faces and new faces. Um, you know, I hope you all enjoyed it as well. Um, I say to talk about these kind of things. I know we, we, we've gone deep today in a lot of, um, you know, a lot of, lot of different parts around fears and Dave, yeah, Finished it really well. I think I'm going to get Moshi now. Mushy, Moshi. So that's why I stole Jerome's. Yeah, that's that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Brilliant. Well, like I said, we'll be back next week with uh, Craig from Cliff. Yep. Um, I had to read my notes again there. Uh, yeah, can't wait to, to have him involved. As, as we mentioned as well, don't forget to after this has finished, go over to the group, get involved with the captions contest. Um, I know Zach and Rosie will be um, oh, sorry posting that over in the group. Yeah. Um, always, you know, nice bit of fun. Um, also some freebies as well. So make sure you what get yourself. Funniest caption wins. Most offensive wins. Uh, I don't know. Usually, I think it's I, funniest wins. Is it funniest? I don't think it's most offensive. Sometimes it's the same. <laughs> That's a valid point. That's a valid point. <laughs> no, brilliant. I hope it's been useful today, and yep. we'll uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Thank you very much, guys. Take care. Adios. Bye. Bye.